Welcome back to Foulmouth Fishing. Uh, quick little tutorial DIY on uh, on a bait that I kind of make up occasionally uh, around springtime mostly. You know, the majority of spring as the water temperatures are coming up and the fish are getting more active. But I also can throw this uh, during the fall season, which is what we're upon right now, as the water temperatures are already hot, the fish are still active, and they're slowly going to start seeing the water temperatures cool down um, and you're going to see the fish kind of gorge themselves for the winter when they go deep water and all. Um, and it, it combines two things that you probably wouldn't expect to be put together. So what does a soft plastic toad, not a hollow body frog, but a soft plastics toad bait, uh, this is one of those Z-Man uh, popping toads, um, I also have my trusty toad box here that I keep separate. I keep my Z-Mans in their own box because if the chemicals are uh, touching other soft plastics, they tend to destroy them. Um, here's another soft body, soft plastic toad. Uh, I particularly like this one because of the, the action that these paddled feet, these uh, feet have these little cutouts on the back end that catch a lot of water for displacement. Um, in fact, this is one I'll probably use for the demonstration. Uh, what does this soft plastic toad and a bladed jig, in this case the original chatterbait uh, from Z-Man, have in common? Well, I like to fundamentally make a chatter toad. So I like to affix a chatterbait blade in front of a soft plastic toad. Um, I, I just, I've always, I've thrown these and they've been successful and I thought I would share this little sort of one-off trick that I use every once in a while uh, with you. It's not something that a lot of people, or anybody for that matter that I've seen, does, but I've, I do it. So <laughs> maybe it might be something you might want to try. The key is, with the chatterbait blade vibrating, very rapidly causing all that noise and disturbance, that clatter that attracts active fish in the hot water and the spring moving in uh, during, during that spawn period or coming in as the water slowly cooling down when the water's temperature still in its 80s, 70s. Um, basically anytime you can throw a chatter bait, you can throw this bait. Uh, I like to use, I don't use a hollow body or a floating, a really substantially floating version of a frog, uh, I mean, excuse me, of a toad, I tend to use more of a uh, neutrally buoyant toad, and I like to use belly weighted EWG hooks. Um, but there's just some simple things that you need to be aware of to build this rig uh, for the most convenience. Things you're going to need you can use any, any hook you want to use, uh, but I personally I go with a belly weighted hook. Uh, you can go with you know, your Gamagatsu. Uh, Superline based belly weighted hook or a VMC. This is what I like to use a lot is a VMC's uh, heavy duty swim bait hook. Um, it's basically just to put enough weight on the toad to get it to submerge, to be able to fish it more rapidly and have it balanced so when it's underwater it's not, you know, rocking too much. It uh, gives it more of a keel to it also so that when you do cast it and it hits, it's not apt to hit upside down on an unweighted hook and not right itself. This, the, the, having the, the keel belly weighted hook, in this case the VMC's, um, I use a 5 watt quarter ounce uh, for, for a larger bait like I'm going to use here. The other key to it is using a belly weighted hook with a spring screw keeper. All right. Now, every toad on the market that I know of, uh, the way they mold them, there is a sprue. So basically, when they when they do the injection molding of these, there's several in a line. The injection of the soft plastic comes down from one side, you know, from one side to top, top to bottom, and then these these baits are molded off left and right. So they're doing two courses at a time, and then there's going to be a residual plastic that they'll remove, and what that actually leaves behind in these baits, which is beneficial to this to this rig, is a little dimple or indent on the center of the nose 
which is very uh, helpful in setting this screw keeper. Now, if you don't have a belly weighted hook, or you don't want, don't want to use a belly weighted hook, you just want to do this on your own and just throw it in open water where you don't have to worry about it hitting, leave, you know, being upside down or what have you. Um, you can always buy the little hitchhikers, uh, and the hitchhikers go on the on the hook eye. Al, for example, uh, say this one here is a belly weighted little red tra a little red hook, three aught. You just throw your hitchhiker spring hitchhiker loops right onto that eyelet and then it instantaneously becomes a screw keeper hook. So if you don't have belly weighted hooks you can use the hitchhikers. Um, secondly what you're going to need besides the screw keeper and a hook is chatterbaits chatterbait blades. You can go online and buy just the blades. Uh, you don't have to sacrifice a chatterbait that you have. Um, if you don't mind sacrificing the chatterbait, I don't. I particularly like to take and buy chatterbaits in different colors multiple times. And what I'll do is I will gently take a pair of pliers and you don't wrench, you don't wrench the eye of the chatterbait's um, jig head open up. What you want to do is you just want to ever so gently twist that eye to one side just enough of a motion. doesn't take a lot. It's only about an eighth of an inch, seventeenth, you know, sixteenth of an inch. Just enough to be able to rotate that chatterbait blade and pop the blade off of that eye. It's just that simple. Of course, technical difficulties. And then you can easily take that eyelet and rotate it back square to where it was and you've not distorted or destroyed your, your line tie. And then, of course, you can always tie to that direct. Just make sure that when you, you, know, when you rotate it back, it's, it's tight to the, to the top of the jig head. Um, you know, worst case scenario, you give it a little, little squeeze on down. But I don't have to. It's, it's right in line. It just rotate it left, rotate it back. Um, you can put your, the other thing you're going to need is some, a pair of uh, split rings. I'll show you that in a second. But you can put split ring on here if you want. You can put uh, quick connects. Um, you can tie direct and just use this as a jig head. Or, you know, you can, I like to take these, do this, put a, uh, a, a split ring on it, and then buy secondary blades, larger blades, different shape blades. Um, I've taken the, uh, the blades off of other brands of vibrating jigs, uh, like the Shutter, um, and, and use that with the Z-Man's hook and jig head, because I particularly like the sharpness and the style of these Z-Man hooks and jig heads and skirts, obviously with the quick change skirt, with that little uh, you know, easy snap on, snap off skirting they have. Um, but I like to use, you know, a different uh, blade a much more substantial blade and I like the fact of having the the uh, split ring on disattaching it disattaching the blade from the jig head which allows the, the blade to actually maneuver and cause a more hunting left and right wider wobble uh, swim pattern rather than the very tight micro swim pattern so getting to into the actual creation of this crazy chattering toad. Um, you're going to take two split rings. Let's count out two little split rings here. Uh, you're going to actually have to balance them out with whatever size hook you're using. So like if if you have like I have a 5 watt, you're going to want like a size 5, um, size 4, size 5 uh, split ring. Um, if you're using a smaller toad and a smaller hook, you might go down to a size 3 split ring. Is that splitting pliers. All right. And what you're going to do is you're going to take these two split rings, open one up, put the uh, one inside the other, because what you're going to need to do is relate the eyelet of the hook, which is vertical, 
you're going to need a split ring to go through that eyelet horizontally. And then, obviously, it allows the blade, which has, again, a horizontal opening or hole, to go through the secondary split ring, which is now vertical. So basically your orientation is you have a vertical eyelet on the hook to a horizontal uh, split ring so that the eyelet stays, uh, stays balanced, uh, the hook stays balanced. Then you have a subsequently rotated uh, vertical uh, split ring attached to the horizontal split ring, which will then connect to the horizontal opening of the chatterbait blade. So that's what we're going to do first. I do this because it's a little bit easier to take care of this step without the soft plastic being attached naturally. Make sure that your spring keeper is on the inside of the gap of the hook, not stuck on the outside, or you'll end up having to take your ring back off to reorient the hook keeper so that the soft plastic is positioned correctly. Okay. This takes some practice, not really. Just blind luck sometimes. <laughs> but, uh, and I'm using, I said, like I said, I'm using a large hook and a small split ring because I don't want too much distance between the chatterbait blade and the soft plastic. So once your hook and your first split ring is attached, then we take our second split ring, we'll open that up, and we'll put on our chatterbait blade that we've sacrificed, or the one that you've purchased, uh, you know, as a replacement chatterbait blade. Um, I give a lot of props to Debo uh, from Debo's Fishing um, YouTube out there because he did a great video on the different varieties of bladed jig blades. Um, going through Z-Man's new processes, they have the, you know, the, the different versions of the Z-Man chatterbait, their modern interpretations of it. Um, also showing, you know, the, the, uh, the jackhammer blade and some of the other brands that came out on the market with just different varieties of chatterbait blades. Um, other thing that you have to keep in mind, unfortunately, because I'm so used to doing this, actually, that I don't want to forget to tell you. Make sure that when you've connected your second O-ring to the chatterbait blade, you've oriented the chatterbait blade with the the bent snout up. So you want to make sure that you've got that plane so that when you're pulling, it's actually functioning as a chatterbait. You don't want to accidentally snap that onto the split ring with the blade curvature down because then you're going to be plowing water. It's not going to give you the, the correct action. So I just want to make sure I touch on that because that's something that, yes, in the past I have done and had to take the blade back off and put the blade back on. That all said and done, this is what you're left with. You've got a belly weighted hook, you've got your free uh, soft plastics screw lock keeper, ahead of that is the vertic or horizontally oriented split ring, then connected to a vertically oriented split ring so that you have the vertical eyelet hole in the hook and the horizontal eyelet hole in the chatterbait connected. So there's that right there. Again, the belly weighted hook allows two functions. Primarily, it's so that your soft plastic toad will sit right, it'll land in the water, it'll stay keeled with the belly down as opposed to, you know, upside down, which is what you don't want. And it also allows this to sink. Um, neutrally buoyant or floating toad you're going to want to go with the weight that is most beneficial for the water column level that you want to go for. Um, you can swim these any, anywhere, like I said, a chatterbait works excellent. I mean, the, the key for a chatterbait, um, besides seasonal, is to run it just over grass lines. Um, if you have grass in, your, in an open water area, you have you know, grass growing up from the, from the bottom, this is an excellent bait. It's something that fish don't see. When was the last time in open water a toad has been, you know, a common bait that a fisherman and angler will will, uh, will toss? Obviously, you're going to eyeball up your hook, place it into the toad, make 
sure it's centered. And I like to text pose. Text pose my hook just that little bit. And it's ready to go. Ready to tie and fly. So there you go. There is the chatter toad. Don't look up in the Ur Urban Dictionary what that might sound like. <laughs> but, uh, so there you go. It's, it's a toad bait on a belly weighted hook with a chatter blade in front. And my neighbor's alarm's going off. Pardon that. Again, I don't, I don't do, uh, I don't do editing. I'm not here for flash in the pan stuff. I'm here just to express techniques and tips that I, that I can share with you. Uh, if you want a whole bunch of commercials and a whole bunch of flash and flare that really doesn't do anything except for waste time on a film, and there's plenty of other channels to watch where you can uh, see them spend six minutes at the beginning of a video showing you, you know, music. Nah, that's not me. But I, I just want to get, uh, I want to get you people out there. I want somebody, if, if you want, try this. Try this. Hashtag hookaholics, all capital letters, hookaholics and put it out on your social media and comment down below the video pictures of fish that you may have caught with it give me your honest opinion does this work as well for you as it has for me in the past tell me what size fish you've caught did it work well um, if you think it's stupid and you think I'm crazy go ahead and tell me I don't think you're gonna think I'm crazy I think it's gonna speak for itself so this is, uh, this is just something that I've done for a long time. It's uh, an original idea, I hope. I, I've never seen anybody else do it, um, mostly because people aren't going to sacrifice their chatterbaits. Now that, that replacement blades and all the different varieties are more you know, handily accessible on the, online um, than they were back in the early 2000s when the chatterbait was a brand new idea, uh, you don't have to sacrifice a $5 chatterbait. You can just go buy the blades separately. But if, that, if you don't have access to the blades, you can always pick up a $5 chatterbait. You still have a perfectly functioning jig head. And then you've got this. And you can obviously change these out. You can throw, you don't have to use a toad. You can throw a, you know, um, you can throw anything. You can throw a creature bait on the back end of this. Uh, a paddle tail swim bait on the back of this. Kai Tech. Uh, you can throw, I've, I've done in the past, I've thrown the larger versions of the, um, the, Catch Co's uh, brand, the Eliminator. So the Eliminator has been thrown on this style of, of uh, chattering belly weighted hook. So I hope this has been a little bit of a mind opening idea. Two split rings, chatterbait blade, belly weighted hook of your choice. Weights vary on what kind of water column you want to do, how you want to fish. If you're off a boat, you can use a heavier weight, go deeper. Uh, if you're fishing off of um, offshore, I suggest a lighter, slightly lighter weight to keep you up, um, so that you're not dragging too much on the bottom. Uh, again, I like the I like toads that have a little bit more of either a curly tail. In this case, with the paddle tail, um, I do like the boot style tail toads for this also, just because the water displacement that these give as it's swimming back and forth with that rapid vibration, that extra flapping action uh, is beneficial um, to causing that, that fish to impulse strike. Uh, if you can't come across the pre-rigged, uh, you know, uh, spiral hook keeper, you can just get your standard, you know, Gamagatsu or whatever brand you, you're happy with, a belly weighted hook, and then grab a pack of the Hitchhiker uh, spring locks twist locks and you can just build you know make your own um, belly weighted or again you can fish it unweighted weightless um, it's entirely up to what you're trying to do the popping uh, toad styles like this the cup mouth is also an interesting variety rather than just the blunt blunt head because as this is vibrating you can you can pause and give it that blurp of water it'll make a different sound also, as this is spinning out of the path of the mouth, it's catching water and displacing it, which causes a far more crazy, erratic action underwater uh, of, the, of the soft plastic bait comparative to, to this, which is more like your standard chatter bait 
with a trailer on the end, which is more uh, just a, a fast vibration. And the paddles on the, on the feet just help with the vertical kicks up and down. But the horizontal movement of this style of setup is very rapid left and right, has the blades, you know, catching water and, and, and vibrating uh, ahead of it. I hope this was entertaining, I hope it was informational, and I certainly hope it opened your mind and gave you an idea for a rig to throw this spring uh, coming up, or even right now in this fall, just see how it, how it acts. But I tend to throw this more in the springtime, as the fish are, are more active uh, in the hot summer when you know the water is at that right temperature and they're, they're really feeding uh, heavily and rapid and e easily eager to uh, attack annoying baits. Um, just a thought, something that fish don't see. They'll see kitex, they'll see paddle tails, they'll see, um, you know, uh, you know, split tail swim baits and, and, and things like that. A, a toad, soft water plastic toad, mid water column on a vibrating jig head or a vibrating bladed head, something they're not used to. Hopefully it'll help you catch your personal best. Uh, maybe you'll, you'll get a big, big hog on it and, uh, Again, if you catch something on it, if you decide to use it, share it on social media, hashtag it, hookaholics, uh, and, and see what you like. You'll come up with a name with it if you want. I, I like to call it the chode, but don't look that up in the early dictionary, because it's a chatterbaited toad. So, uh, y'all have a good night, foul mouth fishing, uh, tight lines, and uh, I'll catch you next cast.